She was like, oh, Lord, the devil made me do it. Don't blame everybody else. Just, just blame me because I let the devil take care of my soul. I was like, All right, y'all. This is my third time recording this Greenleaf recap. Okay, second time. Because the first time I thought I recorded it, but I was actually sleeping, dreaming that I had recorded this. And I woke up and I was like, oh, crap. I haven't did a damn thing. My notes are still laying there in my head. I was laying on my laptop. Buttons all pretty in my face, so it didn't get recorded. So I came up this morning at 2 a.m., when I woke up and realized I still hadn't recorded it and uploaded it and recorded it again and then go put it on my computer and I got like 10 seconds so it didn't record for a whole freaking half hour but I thought I was recording so Greenleaf season 2 episode something or another the royal family I can't remember the episode now because I watched this stuff Wednesday no I watched it Thursday I watched it Thursday and it's really fresh in my mind on Thursday so I'm hoping I'm going to do with some justice and I hope I don't skip some stuff Sophia? Is the child named Sophie or Sophia? I like Sophie, so I keep calling her Sophie. Y'all know I be messed with people's names, but I've been really thinking her name was Sophie. So is it Sophia or Sophie? She's still gonna be called Sophie, but you know. Okay, so she is talking um, to her mama about going to college. And she picked out this college called Rhodes, and she needs the, I guess, an application fee to apply. And Grace doesn't seem too happy about her choice in colleges. Especially when she finds out that she wants to go study, is it theology? Is that the study of religion? She wants to go study religion. And Grace is looking at her real sideways like, that's, that's what your career choice is going to be? And she's like, yeah, that's why I think I really want to go. Now like Sophie again is a new born again, not born again, she's a newborn Christian. She ain't even born again, she just really stepping into the faith. You know, they're real excited about the faith in Christianity and her walk. So, I'm like, you know, it's pretty good that this kid got her head on her shoulders straight and she got some guidance of what she wants to do. Okay, Kevin Cab and Charity are sitting there with the legal teams and they're basically going over their divorce settlement. It's pretty much 50-50 down the line. But you could tell that Kevin is pretty pissed off that first of all, they're sitting here with these damn lawyers in the first place because they really didn't have a time to talk about my nails are dirty i just left my garden y'all i'm so dusty and dirty right now my hair is nasty I, that's why i still twisted and i haven't untwisted yet my nails dirty but i had to come do this recap because if i didn't by the time i took my ass to the shower once i got out of it i'm gonna want to lay the hell down and you would not get this mug until it starts showing again on wednesday so kevin kevin now sitting there and they like i said everything's going 50 50 split until charity says you know what Let's amend the custody section. Kev was like, what? So she wants to amend the custody section. Says she's going to be in Nashville a little bit more than she thought she was going to be. And Kev like, hold up. So you mean tell me that you finna take off with Jabari? And now you want to amend the custody portion? You want more visitation time? Now the, the litter... What is she called? It's not the litigator. It's the one who... Really not the judge. But she heard... Y'all know who I'm talking about. The person that's supposed to be like, you know, keeping the balance between everything. She's not really the judge, but it's just, it's not the litigator. What the heck is she called? I'm going to think of her hopefully by the time I end of this review. She's sitting there. She said, wait a minute. You know, just wait. Because it may play out in your favor, which is true because we didn't hear the terms. By her saying that she's going to Nashville a lot, she may be saying, I need Kevin Kev to have more time. But then again... Since she said she wants to amend the visitation, I'm assuming that Kevin was already giving her, because they said joint custody, which means they both would be split in time. But if it's, if they amended visitation, then I guess Charity's saying that she needs more time with the baby and Kevin's going to have to shorten his time. He ain't hearing that. He not hearing that. And he know damn well this got more to do with Nashville as a music choice than it got to do with Jabarish. He know it. So, he, um... Storms up out of there. Uh, she goes to follow him. She goes to follow him. And he like, look, this is some BS right here. This is some real BS. You going off with Jabari. And he's, she's like, this is not what this is about. It's not what this is about. Come on, Charity. You know. You know that you into Jabari. Grace is hanging out with Rick Fox. I know his name is Darius. But he Rick Fox to me. He, he is not the type of actor that takes on a character for me. 
he will always be Rick Fox. I don't think he can act. So, she out with him. They out car shopping. I believe she said it was for, for Sophie. And he's asking her, well, when can I get you in my car again? He wants to go out on another date. And so he suggested they go out on Saturday. She's like, oh, I can't go Saturday because it's Sophie's birthday party. And dang, it's going to be at the house. It's going to be a lot of family and friends. But I haven't invited you, have I? So he's like, uh, no, you have. She said, well, why don't you go ahead and come? Go on, come through. He like, you sure that you want me to come through there? And finally get introduced to the family. And she's like, I mean, it's, just, it's a party for my baby. So yeah, come on through. I don't understand why adults invite other adults to a kid's party. I'm telling you, my family and friends, they got three, four, five, six-year-olds. And we have about three, four, five, six-year-olds at the doggone party. And the other hundred people be grown-up folks. Why? If you just want to have a party for yourself, throw a party for yourself. Don't use the kids' as an excuse. I don't like grown-ups being at kids' party unless they're family. I could see family coming. And then it shouldn't be too many of us. Maybe you got that one auntie that like to turn up. You know, she's going to set the party off and all your little friends like her anyway. She cool. Grandma at the party? No, she shouldn't be there. She shouldn't be there. This is just a birthday party. It ain't graduation. You know, it's just a birthday party. It ain't anniversary she ain't going off to school ain't her coronation it's just a birthday party is a coronation the same as a birthday party i don't know what a coronation is exactly i don't know what they do coronations for it may be for birthdays is that for the 16th birthday whatever i think she's turning 17 because she's about to graduate she's looking at colleges lady may is sitting there talking to charity and charity tells her she thinks kevin is going to go for full custody of this baby now he didn't imply that unless i missed it but that's the impression that she gives Lady May. And Lady May is like, oh, hell to the no, no, no. What's Sheree say? Hell to the no, no, no. No, she's not gonna, he's not gonna do that. So now Lady May is up in arms. She's like, okay, we need to get our ducks in a row. Get it together. Make sure that he don't get nothing. He, full custody show ain't gonna be it. And she's like, what the heck really happened between you two? Because that's gonna help set the precedence of how hard I go in on him. And Charity's like, nothing. He did nothing wrong. He did nothing wrong. She's like, something happened. He hurt you some kind of way. I need to know what that is. Jacob rolls up to Basie. And he tells him, look here, I've been going through the donors list. And there's a lot of donors that um, have been able to give it a pass. And there's this one big donor. His name is uh, Bass Reeves. And I've been trying to reach him. Because he, he always kicks in a lot of money. I've been trying to reach him. He, um, his email off, his phone off, he will move, whatever, everything, I can't reach him. And basic is real, like, the heck you looking for him for? He gets real offended, offensive, at the fact that he looking for him. He's like, look here, you know, I'm out here looking for donors to help us with our legal issues. He could be one that could really be beneficial. And so, he says, so you just going through the records, huh? You just really taking the initiative to go through the records. And it's the name you come up upon. He's like, yeah, you know. He said, yeah, Waffle House. He's like, what, the, what, what does Waffle House mean? So he started telling his little story about how he go play cards up in the Waffle House, you know. And he said, so all you do know? He said, come on, bro. This for real. What is your real reason for asking for bass reasons? What is your real reason you looking for this dude? Bishop goes to talk to Grace about the Bridezilla from last week. And he's like, what the heck happened? You know, what is the issue with you... And the parishioner that y'all couldn't get this wedding together. I, I don't. He basically ended up saying, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and handle that. But you need to get yourself together, Grace, for real. So at this moment, Grace decides to tell him that she invited Darius to Rick Fox to the, uh, the birthday party. And he was like, oh, that's cool. We was wondering when you was going to finally get out there and start dating again. And so... He was trying to figure out well, who was Darius to say, you know, the journalist. The journalist that wrote that BS report on me. Well, it wasn't BS for real, though, Bishop. But, yeah, the journalist that wrote up that article on me, she's like, you know, yeah, him. He said, ah, mm. I'll be get back to you on that one. I'm going to get back to you on that one. Basie uh, pretty much unloads on Jacob that he is Bass Reeves. That's his uh, duplicate identity. Basie Bass. I, that's what I was kind of relating to. But he comes to tell him that Bass Reeves is actually a real person. He was an old gunslinger back in the day. And so he just picked up that name. And, uh, <laughs> but 
But uh, pretty much he 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 a, he a, not I was gonna say a pool shark. He a, a hustler. He card player. He likes to flip them cards. And like I said, he's showing him little slights of hands that he's doing on the table. He was doing a little three card molly and. He said, uh, well, do you play poker? Jacob said, yeah, I love me some poker. That's my game. He said, well, how about you uh, get in on the game with us? No, these games usually blow through town periodically. And while he talking to him, apparently, a game blew through town. So, uh, he's like, well, we can set this up. But they just told me that they ain't got the spot no more. So, we got to do this at your house. Come on, Jacob. You're not that green. Wait a minute. Yes. Yes, you are green. You believe everything that fall out that man's mouth. So... Um, they setting up this car party. He said, well, I gotta like, I gotta tell Carissa something. He's like, no, you ain't gotta tell her nothing. He said, it is. Jacob said, well, if it's for work. He said, well, you are trying to raise money for the church, so it is a work thing. So Jacob goes to Carissa and lie to her about the fact that he gotta do some work so he can't go to his own niece's birthday party, but Carissa gotta go. I understand y'all married, but this ain't her niece. This is your niece, but he gonna skip out and go play cards with Basie. And um, she actually surprisingly took it differently than I thought. Because she was like, you know, I'm kind of jealous that you get to do some stuff that I ain't got to do. And I got to go to this doggone party. Well, speaking of this party, I think I skipped the part. Um, Zora comes to her parents and she wants to tell, she wants to bring um, Isaiah, fake-ass Miguel, to Sophie's party. And her parents like, look here, you can't hang out with this little boy. Last time you was with him. He had you lying, had you sneaking out, um, you getting in trouble, and she said, hey, come on now, come on, we got to rise as a people, we got to rise as a people, we got to get over that, you know, let go, let, let go, let God, and don't blame him for the wrong stuff I was doing, don't, don't punish him, I was the bad person, my little cousin did this before, <laughs> she used to go to this Lutheran school, and she got in trouble at school, right? And so, <laughs> when her mama came up to the school to find out what's going on, she was like, oh, Lord, the devil made me do it. Don't blame everybody else. Just, just blame me because I let the devil take care of my soul. I was like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's what this moment reminded me of, with the exception of, you could tell Zora was playing her parents. My little cousin was for serious. <laughs> They agree to go on and her bring little funky Isaiah to Sophie's party. Uh, with the uh, one exception that they don't leave that house. Okay. Lady May rushes into the bishop's office and says, Hey, Kevin is gay. He said, What the heck? She said, Yes, Lord. He said, Where the heck you get that from? Who told you that mess? She said, I'm charity. I mean, she didn't say it in so many words, but. She said he going up to that 42 meeting. You know, doggone where the 42 meeting is only for gay people who trying to pray the gay away. You already know. So, uh, this is what we're going to have to do. We need to get Kevin Kev up out of here. He said, what you mean? She said, at our house, at our church, at our life, he got to go. Bishop said, oh, no, we can't be doing that. We can't have no class action suit, especially on the tail end of what happened with old boy whose name I can't remember. But I remember that his boyfriend is Kyle Barker and Kyle Barker's name is Reggie. What's the dude name? OMG. I don't know. But he didn't want no class extra suit. You already got one gay scandal. You don't need another one on top of that. And, uh, no, Lady May said, no, nah, uh, this got to be handled. He said, well, look here. It ain't finna be handled by me right now. We got bigger fish to fry. So, he basically, uh, I guess apparently tells her about Darius. Because he next goes out into the, in the hallway and he's telling Grace, look here. He can't come. <laughs> Your mama said, no. No way, no how, no shoulda, coulda, coulda no wouldas. He ain't stepping his foot up on our property. And uh, Grace was like, well, shoot, you tried, you know. <laughs> so, Lady May confronts uh, Kevy Kev while, they're, while she's getting the party together. And basically tells him, look here, son. You're going to need to tighten up on your demands in this divorce settlement. You can't get everything you want. And the reason why? Because I know your business, boy. And I will put it out there. I will spill all the tea. Spill all the beans. You know, crack all the glass house around you. It's going to come out. Trust me. I know your business. I know your business. By the time she said, I know your business, that third time, Kevin Kev hooked on to what she was talking about. Oh, now he is on fire. Talking about on fire, right? 
Grace tells Darius, look her partner, you ain't welcome at this party. He was like, what? You know, he was already telling her about the gift he had bought Sophie. He was so excited. She was like, yeah. Ah, the parents not really feeling it. And he was like, okay, yeah, I kind of figured that that was going to go down like that. Which is kind of contradictory to what's going to happen next. Because she said, well, okay, well, why don't we just get together on Sunday? He said, you know what? Yeah, friend zone. <laughs> he stuck Grace butt right on in the friend zone, y'all. Right on in the friend zone. And she's like, what you talking about? We can't go out no more. She, he's like, ah, not really. I mean, I ain't going to be able to talk to you, call you up when I need to. Ah, not really. She's like, what, what, what does this mean for us? He said, you know what? Don't call me. I call you. Give me a couple of days, you know. I'm like, okay, you just said that you figured that the parents wasn't going to appreciate you coming to the house. But why does that make you cancel out everything else? She's been out with you shucking a job. Because when he said he... he hmm. He ain't gonna never be a Christian man or like back in the church and you know, they they all they walk in two different lives right now. So I mean it's probably for the best, but I don't know. I just <laughs> she was straight friend zoned and yeah. <laughs> so Kevin Kev and Charity again are meeting with your legal counsel. And This time around, um, it seemed like everything is one-sided. The, the charity is at demanding a lot of stuff in his legal request, but charity's like, hold the hell up. Where the hell does this come from? So she talks to Aaron like, wait a minute. This is not what we had originally in this agreement. Things have now changed. Kevin's sitting there getting madder and madder and madder. He got his back turned to him. He said, you know what? Just sign the damn thing and let's get this over with. And she's like, wait a minute, what? No, this is not what I asked for. I didn't ask for this. He said, look, let's just get this paperwork done. And his lawyer was like, no, I will be a fool to let you sign that. He said, I ain't ask you your opinion. I said, sign it. She's like, well, you don't have to sign a malpractice agreement with me if you finna if you sign this. He's like, well, that's what we're going to have to do, but we finna get this done. So he um, leaves up out of there again, and Charity chased him down again. And she's like, Kevin... Kevin, now, now you know, when <laughs> you scream at somebody's name, and the louder you get, the louder you get, and he keep ignoring you, you know he heard you, but she keep calling his name, so she finally catch up to him, and she's like, what is going on? He said, you told your damn mama I'm gay? <sighs> mm-hmm, okay, Cherry. <laughs> He's like, I can't believe you told her that. It's like, one, they had already had a discussion on how they were going to release this information to the rest of the world basically at the end of the discussion they still didn't have an idea but going off and telling her mama the the chatterbox of the church no he's like you know doggone well now that your mama know she gonna tell everybody that i'm gay he ain't even did nothing i found that out because i told you i was still watching season one he didn't even have sex he just had urges so he is not you know um did the dang. He did the doggone thing. That's all. He just had some urges. And he told her about it. And his, his urges was real. His urges was real. But somebody said, um, I think I was watching Ashley Miller uh, review on one of these. And I don't know if it was her or, or somebody in the comment section that was saying that, you know, he just gay. He just hasn't accepted who he is. Um, He could be bi. I mean, because he still seems to have an attraction for her as well. So, he could be bi. And being that he has not acted on it. Maybe he will one day, maybe he won't. Like I said, I know a lot of gay people, and if they're being honest with me, who have never did the act. They are still virgins, and they are virgins because they do not want to do the act because of the fact that they believe it's a sin. So it's possible, unless they lie to me. But, you know, I'm going to take it for their word. Why, why they got to lie to me? Why they got to lie about who they screwing? It's, it's not really of importance for me. It's not doing anything for my life. But, okay. So... Kevin pretty much tell her, look her, you need to stay the hell out of my doggone business. Plain and simple, right? Because, yeah, she did just, she didn't just tell him that, but Kevin gave She told him about the fortitude meetings, and, yeah, Charity just spilled all the little beans right there, baby. Mm-hmm. So, they at the poker game at the, at the, 
at the Greenleaf household, at the Jacob Greenleaf household. They had the poker game. And there's some charlatans up in this mug. And I'm thinking something that's about to pop off. It's going to be a fire heartbeat type of thing. You know, at the beginning of the movie, they was playing cards. And the cards didn't fall right. They get up and somebody starts shooting, bang, bang, pow, pow. I thought it was going to go down like that because they are betting big money. They got 10 grand on the table, baby, for this hand. And the, uh, the one of the dudes is like, I... I I see that 10 and I'm going to raise you 10 more. I'm like, what, 20 G's? For a poker hand? What the heck? Where are, where are these black men at? With all this type of money that they just spreading around all willy-nilly like that. You know? Spread a little more way. I got some hassle pearls need to get done. But uh, everybody else folds. Especially Jacob. Thank goodness Jacob was smart enough to fold as well. But Basie like, oh no, I got this partner now. We already know. Basie already showed us that he got the tricks of the trade. So, you know, he already sitting on something. The dude flip his cards and Basie flip his and like, pow! I wish he was playing spades or he would have bossed and pow! Smack that card on his forehead. <laughs> you know how we do in spades. I wish Basie would have did that. He seemed like he had spades playing and he'd be like, smack it out. Just smack it on the table. Pow! Playing some bones. Pow! Hit that spin and spin. That seemed like basic. But okay, so he got this money and then, and, and hey, they won. They won. So, you know, he already stacked that deck. Grace is at the party and Kevin and Aaron are talking and Aaron is trying to apologize to him for how things are going on. Kevin ain't trying to hear him right now. He's still pretty, you know, like, screw them, screw this family. Just, you know, let's just be done with this. But Aaron's trying to really be apologetic, and he tries to walk away from him, and Grace is like, hey, wait, wait, wait. Can y'all two go out here and get Sophie's car for me? The boat was pretty big. It's a two-man job, all right? So they go out there, and why I got the feeling that Aaron is gay? Why do I have the feeling that they finna write this into script? Own Network, Oprah Darling, the writers of this show, Please, for the love of everything that's good, do not hook Kevin Kev up with the odd creature. Kevin too fine for that. Come on, man. This dude is such an oddball creature. He even odded his mannerisms. No, 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 no. Kevin needs somebody that's going to piss Cherry to the hell off. Maybe Javari. I don't know, but Javari, I don't really like him much either. All right, my battery is almost dying. So, Jake questions basically about what he's going to do with his money. Basically, say, basically he um, slips it in different names, made up names on a tithe and envelopes, and he passed it through the church. And that's where Bass Reeves came from. And um, yeah, he should make up some names too. And so that way they can filter that money back on through the church. And Jacob is like, you really going to give all this money to the church? And basically, say, yeah, that's what the whole purpose of this is for. He say, that's why I don't see nothing wrong with it. Because I'm using the money. I'm giving it back to the church. I'm not keeping it for myself. This is God's money, man. And Jacob's sitting here like, he looking real like, there's something else I could be doing with this. Which is so odd since you come from a family of money. That you would still be so enticed by money. I don't know. But okay. Let me try to get this done, y'all. Let me try to get this done. Let me try to get this done. Charity confronts Lady May about Kevin Kev. She's like, look, you ain't finna fire him. You are not getting rid of Kevin. And she's like, what you, what? He, he's he not finna bring this church down. She said, but you not finna let him go. I'm still reeling off the whole other gay situation. You ain't finna let Kevin go. That's not what you finna do. Lady May said, I know you not trying to check me, boo. <laughs> let me tell you right here. This is about family. About Ella Familia. And Kevin is not part of it, honey bunny. So... Family first, you need to recognize that, and that's all the way that this is going, okay? So, Zora and fake-ass Miguel talk uh, Grace into letting them go out with the car for Sophie's birthday, and they all mounted up, you know, everybody agreed, which was weird considering that they had already told Zora she can't leave the house with this dude, but she, Carissa gone, gonna let him leave, so they, um... They load up and they ride and they ride it and they go to this bowling alley and Zora's like, I have not been bowling since I was a kid. You still a kid, girl? <laughs> but she ain't been bowling since she was a kid. And Sophie is really excited. You know, her her little boo thing. She's really excited. And Zora's like, look here, let's go to this club. I can get you some drinks. I got five on it. We can do this thing. And Sophie's like, no, that's not what I want to do. I don't want to get no drink. I want to bowl. 
She's like, come on, girl, this is some kitty stuff. She's like, no. She's like, well, can me and him go? She was like, no. She's like, this is my dog on birthday. Ever since that you hooked up with this dude, you can't breathe without his name being on the tip of your tongue. Every time around you, you're texting him, you're calling him, you're Facebooking him, you're Snapchatting him, you're at his rehearsals, you're doing this for him, you're doing that for them. When is it going to be some time for you? Because this is my dog on the birthday. You're supposed to be spending time with me, and you're trying to run off with him. So I was like, I can't believe that you would do this. I would never do something like this to you. She's talking about the embarrassment. But boo, you already did. You already did when you took the dude that your cousin was liking and you knew your cousin liked him. You was shady, shady, shady then. So yes, you would, Zora. Um, but Sophie's like, no, I ain't finna cover for your butt this time. But Zora takes off with old fake ass Miguel. So I wonder what's gonna happen with that. Is is Sophie gonna snitch? Is she gonna tell or she just gonna let her ride up into the sauce set and she already got in trouble once for not telling the first time, so I wonder what she's going to do. I think she's going to go bold, though. She's going to enjoy her doggone birthday with her boo thing. Grace tells Bishop that um, she doesn't want Sophie to to teach. Um, he see that She see that he bought her a study Bible for her birthday, and she feels like her daddy is trying to push Sophie into teaching like her or preaching like her. And he like, um, no, that ain't what happened. And she's like, well, you got me a study Bible. You got, uh, Jacob study Bible, but you didn't get charity and faith one. We, and we the two that was trying to preach. He was like, look, your little girl came to me a couple of days ago. Said she want to lead you, lead the little types of ministry. So don't be jumping at me about that. She already got her own path and her own mind made up. Maybe you just talk to her about that. Cause I don't see nothing wrong with it. And me personally. I don't see nothing wrong with it either. I'm like, go ahead on, Sophie, girl. Do your thing. Grace should be proud, I think. But Grace feels like everything that's going wrong in her life is because of the path that she chose and to go into the ministry. All the, the, the promiscuity that she, has, that she goes through, um, whatever happened with her marriage and all this stuff with uh, Faith and the Uncle Perv, she blames that on her following the path of ministry. I mean, of course, the whole doggone family is leading co corrupted lives. Of course they are. But, baby, Sophie can get into that without being under the cloth. Prime example. <laughs> but as, as, as if being outside of the ministry is going to help her not be a sinner. Come on, Grace, use your brain. So, Pop's like, uh, what exactly can we do to get your butt back into the fold? And she's like, uh, remove Uncle, Uncle Perf. That's the only thing that's going to get me back there. Pop say, uh, the bishop say, look here, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And who shall ever try to take that wheel in this world? We're going to drive their butt right into a ditch. Crash and bang, burn, baby. Crash and burn. And Grace, honey, baby child, you are crashing. You are skidding down the road of life with your brakes gone out, girl. It's a ditch to the side. Ain't no guardrail to hold you back. You veering off and you willingly, willingly swerved yourself into that direction. Come on back to the phone. Come on back. It's the gravel over here. You can slow down your roll. You pump, you know, that little hill going up. Get up there so you try to catch your speed. Slow you down a little bit. Come on back, girl. Come on back. That's the end of Greenleaf, y'all. I am so sorry this video is late. Like I said, I'm trying to record this three times. Two, but one in my head. And um, I just got done with the garden. I'm going to go shower and get all this filth, flam, flip off me. Give me some dinner. And, um. Uh, I will see y'all on tomorrow for my weight loss Sunday update. Alright? Peace.